Okay, let's have a look at bidirectional protected devices. And what are they? A bidirectional protected device is a device where it is intended by the manufacturer that the source of supply is connected to either or both sets of connection terminals. A unidirectional device is a protective device where it is intended by the manufacturer that a source of supply is only connected to one defined set of connection terminals. This is in BS 7671 2018 Amendment 3, 2024. There's been a bit of fuss about it. Then we've got a Reg 530.3.201. Selection and erection of equipment for protection shall take account of appropriate use of either unidirectional or bidirectional protective devices. Then there's a note about how these are identified and marked. Let's just have a quick look at the flow of power through an RCBO. So power comes in on the bus bar, under the bus bar terminal, goes onto the bimetallic thermal overload, through the operating mechanism, there's the moving contact, goes through that, through the solenoid coil, then the light goes through the toroid, onto the line load terminal, and onto the load. And it returns on the neutral, back through the toroid, and back to the neutral bar. Then we have DC current, which flows from the solar panel to the inverter. And this DC current is converted into a form of AC current, which returns back down the line connection, through the low connection, on back through the toroid, through the solenoid, back on the moving contact in the operating mechanism, back down the thermal overload, and onto the bus bar connection. Exactly the same path, it's just doing it top down. But remember, this is AC current. AC current oscillates. 50 times a second and changes direction 100 times a second. So this current is rapidly changing direction. Our bidirectional and unidirectional devices are designed to be able to deal with the frequency of AC voltage. So the frequency or direction change, if you like, is not the issue with bidirectional and unidirectional devices. The issue is where you connect the source of power these devices are manufactured so it's possible to connect the supply to either one terminal or to two terminals, depending on the device. You can see when the device is tripped, there's still power to parts of the RCBO before the moving contact, because this is solidly linked to the bus bar. So this bottom section will always be energized in the internal controls of the RCBO and obviously the load are isolated when the device operates. Now you can imagine the same thing coming in from the opposite direction. If you put a supply through these terminals instead of a load, you'll be energising the top half of the RCBO until the generating device stops producing power. And these electronics are not designed to be powered in this way, continuously loaded, bidirectional, can have a supply on both terminals. Unidirectional are designed to only have a source of power on one defined terminal. We'll have a quick look at how the RCBO works. So if a coil senses an imbalance on the live and neutral, the trip coil will activate a thyristor, which sends power onto the solenoid coil, operating a little plunger, which pushes down on the tripping mechanism, opening the moving contact, and disconnects power. Now, because RCBOs have got quite a lot going on, and they have to be able to detect different types of current now, AC and DC, and because the fashion is for single module, small RCBOs, space is at a premium. So some manufacturers, to save space and money, might use components that are not rated or designed to be continuously loaded. So that means where the supply is connected to the device takes on a critical importance. So these electronic components are designed to be energised for a very short time, usually the opening of the RCD, which is milliseconds. Any longer, they're going to overheat and fail. And because we've got a second source of power from the top of the RCBO, these components will remain energised until that generating source shuts down. And that might be too long for these components and the burnout. This is the problem. The RCD has opened, but power is not disconnected. 
Now the opening of the RCD should disconnect the generating source of power, the inverter or the EV charger, or so you'd think. And how quickly does it do it? I don't know. I suppose it's got to be device dependent, but I doubt there's a single standard. But we've also got the issue as well of the actual product quality, the company's integrity. How good are they? Do they do their research? Are these inverters and such compliant? I know on some you can have shutdown parameters, which you can change. So you might get installer error. And then you might have some mechanical devices as well. So you might have some kind of spinning inertia. So there's plenty of things which might affect how long it takes for power to stop feeding these RCBOs. Another important thing as well, uh, which I think needs good understanding from installers, where's this generated source of power going? Once it's on the bus bar, it can go out onto the grid, causing possible danger for people working on it. But I'm going off a bit there. Let's get back to these bidirectionals. Here we can see an RCBO operating as it should. Power's going through the device. The trip coil has sensed an issue, sends power onto the thyristor, operates the solenoid, which opens the contacts, and the RCBO has tripped. You'll notice there's no power to the thyristor anymore. Here you can see the device working, sensing, operating. Working, sensing, operating. That's how it should be. But add the second source of power from the solar inverter, we get working, sensing, operating, overloading. You'll notice that the RCD has operated, but power hasn't stopped at the moving contact. We've got the second supply feeding from the top of the RCBO, still energizing the circuit board and causing the electronic components to fail. We probably won't even realize it's an issue. Find the fault, reset the RCBO, thing all is good, but you've lost the functionality of the RCD. The thermal and magnetic aspects of the RCBO will probably still work, but we've lost the RCD. We've lost our additional protection, and you might have also lost your fault protection as well, if you've got a TT system, for example. And another possible issue is, if somebody has a prolonged press of the test button, that can overload the test button resistor and damage the device that way as well. MCBs generally don't seem to suffer from this issue. That's because they haven't got any electronic components which fail. The solenoid and the bimetallic strip will work if connected either way. So how do you know which device is which? Basically unidirectional have some indication of the floor power. It'll say in and out or line and load. So you know it's not suitable for two connections. The bi-directional will not specify which is in and out, or line and load, or have an arrow showing direction. You might get markings for polarity. But the best thing to do is check with the manufacturer for your particular device, because you may be unsure. The markings may not be clear or obvious to you. A company called Beamer have produced some guidance on this. I'll put a link in the description, and I'll also put a link to the amendment. So that's your bidirectional devices. I hope it's been of some help. And thanks for watching. Keep safe.